Well, good morning. Uh, this is a crazy time that we're in, but we are glad that we serve a mighty God and that we can still worship together and uh, follow him and trust in him and, and seek his face. Um, Jesus tells us that if we seek the kingdom of heaven, all this righteousness is going to be added to us, that if we just continue pursuing him, he's going to be faithful to complete in us all of those things. And uh, today I wanted to start us with a thought coming from Psalm 84, which was not written by David. A lot of the Psalms were, but this one was written by the sons of Korah, um, who had gone off the rails and, and done some terrible things. And these are his descendants kind of trying to, to restore themselves, get back on track, um, and try to be faithful, even though uh, they, they're the children of someone who had been faithless. Um, and they write that better is one day in the courts of God than a thousand elsewhere, and that their heart and their soul uh, cries out to be in the presence of God. Um, and so I just wanted to start us with that thought this morning from Psalm 84. Um, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you that you are faithful and that you have us in your hands, and we ask us to trust you uh, through these trying times. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's sing together.
your forgiveness. It's like sweet, sweet honey on my lips. Like the sound of a symphony to my ear. Like holy water on my skin. Like we come to you with open hearts and with open arms. We ask that you be with us. Help us to be safe, wise, good stewards right now in this time of hardship. Help us to love our neighbors as ourselves and to do it in humility. Lord, you teach us to be humble and we ask that you help make us humble. We want to chase after you and seek you today, Lord Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Um, Another week has gone by, and we pray as we continue to lean on God and trust in Him and pray that our faith continues to grow, um, that God will continue to give us a peace um, that surpasses all understanding as we wait for this to pass by, and we know that this too shall pass um, but as we begin our uh, teaching for today, let me open up in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to gather together once again. Um, though we are scattered in different houses, Father, we know that your presence is there. Father, as we open your word, as we are led by your spirit, Father, help us uh, through your word today to learn how to be better followers of Jesus Christ, to be encouraged by your love, to be um, encouraged by your word. And Lord, we pray that as we continue to be the people that bring light into this world, Father, that you may shine light in our homes today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Um, so through the month of um, March, since the beginning of March, we've been doing a series on sketching um, different aspects of Christ's love. And we have seen through the Word of God different images, different sketches that Jesus uh, left for us that we can admire, we can contemplate and learn from, but most importantly, um, we can live out through our actions. And every Sunday, we look at a particular story that gives us a sketch of Christ's love. And we invite different people to be able to sketch that um, artistically, but at the end of the day, we are trying to invite people to live it out and sketch it through the way they live. Um, what often gets deeply engraved in people's minds are going to be images uh, more than words. And that's why when we want to make sure that someone remembers a message, um, we often put billboards, we often put uh, signs or flyers or ads with images on it. And they either place them in as many places as possible as they can, or they select a very strategic place um, where there will be many people looking at that image. And they will use different strategies. For example, some will be using very creative images or funny images or flashy images or provocative images or unconventional images or inspiring images, clever images, and so forth. One that makes me laugh often is, I'm pretty sure you're familiar with it, um, but just to tell you the power of image is, I don't know if you've seen this billboard where they have two cows um, painting on the billboard and they are writing on that billboard, eat more chicken. And it's an ad from Chick-fil-A, but it's a very unique cow. And so every time I see a cow with black dots, my mind automatically goes to that ad. And then after that, I start thinking about Chick-fil-A. And then I start thinking, hmm, I would love to eat one of those chicken sandwiches right now. Now, Chick-fil-A hasn't paid me anything for this, but just, just an example. It's unforgettable. It's an image that you cannot forget um, because it's so different and it's so creative and it's funny at the same time. And like those flyers and billboards, people will remember when our humble actions sketch an unforgettable image in their minds. And as we talk about the sketch of humbleness, one I find very unforgettable um, through God's word is when Jesus washes his disciples' feet. And today we have um, a sketch that Annie Nielsen did with the children uh, we weren't able to get all the footprints of the children um, because of um, us trying to stay away um, as much as possible from the public. Um, but we did get to have a, a few of those footprints. Um, and thank you, Annie, for that. But today's story comes from John 13, verses 3 through 9, where it sketches for us a sketch of humbleness that calls us to sketch through our lives as well. And the Word of God begins like this in John chapter 13 verses 3 through 9 and I'm reading through um, Common English Bible version and it says Jesus knew the Father had given everything into his hands and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the table and took off his robes Picking up a linen towel, he tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a wash basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he was wearing. When Jesus came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You don't understand what I'm doing now, but you will understand later. No, Peter said, you will never wash my feet. Jesus replied, Unless I wash you, you won't have a place with me. Simon Peter said, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. 
Now to give you an idea of why this was such an unforgettable image for the disciples and to us today, we need to understand the context a little bit. Unlike many images that you might see today about the Last Supper where Jesus eats uh, with his disciples, um, where they're sitting all on one side of the table and on chairs, in Jesus' time, it was common to have meals while sitting on the floor. And in some cases, you would be able to recline on your side and eat uh, from tables that were made um, to that height, very low. And it was also common to use sandals um, and your feet would get pretty dirty as in those days, there were a lot of dirt paths and roads. So often when invited into a home, you would offer the person, um, your guest, some water so that he or she could wash their feet or depending on your status, you would have a servant who would do that for your guests. And to be honest, I would really like to smell my food rather than smell something else that is not pleasant. And so it was something respectful to do. And it wasn't something that people looked forward to do as well because again, to stoop down, to fall on your knees and to wash a person's feet requires a lot of humbleness. It was probably something um, they would never have expected Jesus to do. If anything, it should have been the disciples who would have offered to wash Jesus' feet. It was also humbling having their feet washed by their Savior, Lord and Jesus Christ. And I have to be able to take down pride or any notion of entitlement or any feeling of superiority and truly be led by love to go against the norm and do something so radically humble that it leaves an unforgettable image in people's mind. And often I can say probably that I don't have a hard time sketching humbleness as for example serving others. Um, my difficulty sometimes comes when I am on the recipient end of an act of humbleness or an act of service. I had to learn this early on in my ministry while in Bolivia. When pastoring a church that was small, um, it was kind of out in the suburbs and um, it was a place where there were a lot of poverty. And I would often be invited as a pastor um, to the, these homes and sit at this crowded table with them as they offer this humble meal, um, a very simple meal. It was a stew with chicken and rice, <laughs> very basic. Um, and I would have a hard time receiving because I would look at what they had and didn't have and I would look at what I had and obviously I had more than they did. And to make things worse, um, I knew they needed this more than I did and the plate that they would always give me would be bigger than their plates. I had to struggle through this for a while and I had to understand why and I finally did learn why and I had to learn to repent from my pride, my own pride. Once I was able to get past that, I was able to learn that it made them not only happy that I was able to eat with them, receive the food and eat all of it, but ask for seconds. And so um, later on, I had no shame in asking for seconds. To give them the opportunity, to give this family the opportunity to know that to humbly serve is not reserved to a certain group of people. To give this family the opportunity to really be appreciated and treated with dignity for the love that drives their humble service, their hospitality, to give them the opportunity to receive the bigger blessing of giving than receiving, to give them those opportunities, I myself had to learn how to sketch humbleness. I pray that you never let the standards of this world dictate whether you are worthy or not 
to humbly serve others or to receive an act of humble service from others or allow certain patterns of this world dictate certain boundaries to your sketch of humbleness. I'm pretty sure you've probably heard it before. Um, some people might say, hey, you can humbly serve this group of people, but don't you dare serve these group of people. And so they are limiting your sketch of humbleness. And oftentimes it goes this way as well. They will tell you your level of humbleness can only reach this level, but don't you dare go down lower because it does not fit you. And I believe we limit our sketch of humbleness that Christ wants us to replicate. And I'm sure that as you are staying home and as you encounter um, your family, your children, your spouse, who may not be respecting that six feet distance, um, I'm pretty sure your humbleness will be tested. And before we think about sketching humbleness with those that are not in our homes, I pray that we begin with those who are in our homes to be able to sketch humbleness with those close around us. When we let those things infiltrate in our mind, I think we lose the meaning of Christ-like humbleness, who being the very Son of God, being the King of Kings, being the Lord of Lords, being the Alpha and Omega, says, I am here to serve you. And not only that, but to die for you. You see, Jesus' humbleness goes beyond just the washing of our feet. Jesus' humbleness has been forever engraved in my mind as he ignored the mockery of those around him who questioned his identity while hanging on that cross. And as he focuses not on the voices that are mocking him, but as he focuses on his loving children, I begin to see the sketch of humbleness in his heart. Jesus' humbleness has been forever engraved in my mind as he comes to life from the grave to tell me that his humbleness is an everlasting deal, to tell me that he plans to be my shepherd, not only today, but forevermore. Now we get to sketch that humbleness with those around us. We sketch humbleness as we focus on the person we are serving and not listen to the voices that may critique our action. We sketch humbleness as we focus on the person serving us and humbly accepting their blessing. We sketch humbleness as we focus not being, on not being served all the time, but learning to serve others as well and taking every opportunity we can to do so. And these are the moments when we find deep joy. Jesus tells his disciples later on after he's done washing their feet. In John 13, 14 through 17, it says like this, If I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you too must wash each other's feet. I have given you an example, a sketch. Just as I have done, you also must do. I assure you, servants are greater than their master, nor are those who are sent greater than the one who sent them. Since you know these things, you will be happy if you do them. As humans, um, we have many flaws. And it's easy for us to think um, of how others should serve me, especially in times of crisis. And I pray now more than ever that we may shock the world and leave a trail of unforgettable images in our walk with God as we sketch humbleness and find ways to serve one another. We are already seeing this in so many ways as a church rises to be present with unwavering faith in a time where there is so much uncertainty. And may the Lord then continue to give us grace and fill us with the Spirit's presence to sketch Christ's humble love in a manner that brings people close to God and find the unwavering hope that we have today. And as Galatians 6, 9 says, 
Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. What we are going through today, it will pass. It will soon pass. And when it passes, I pray that we will all be able to say that we did not give up, that we kept our good fight, and rejoice together in the harvest that we have reaped for those who saw our sketches of holiness. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, because you have shown us through your life not only one sketch of humbleness, but so many, Lord. We pray that as we meditate and as we reflect on what has been shared today, Lord, teach us how to be a people that learn how to wash other people's feet. Help us how to sketch humbleness, beginning with those around us. Help us, Lord, how to be able to replicate that in our lives. May that image be engraved in people's mind. May question their faith, Lord, and ask, Father, how they can come about to understand and know you. Father, I pray that you give us the courage to continue to stand firm. Give us the courage to continue to um, put on the armor of God and fight the good fight. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.